This video is going to review an app called Eye Movement Training from the Ebenezer School, which is a great app for our students that have cortical visual impairment, um, which is a brain-based visual impairment. It's also just a great app for any student that would benefit from visual tracking. Um, while there's a variety of apps out there that can attract a student's vision, uh, we're looking for some apps that not only attract someone to look at the screen, but also for your student to be able to then follow and track motion and movement and objects on that screen. Um, it's important that our students learn to hold their gaze and follow movement. This will allow them to maintain concentration on things that are happening around them, as well as the people who are talking to them. So on your iOS device, go ahead and go to the App Store. Once the App Store opens up, um, go ahead and do a search and type in eye movement training as three different words and press search. Of course, you'll have, um, well, typically you'll have some form of an advertisement like you see at the top of the screen. In this case, you'll see eye movement training education. The image for this is a screen that says eye movement training start. Um, if you did not have this, you would need to purchase it or install it. Um, this is a free app, so it will not cost you any money. Um, once you download it, it will show up on your home page, one of your home pages, as an app, iMove, with that same green uh, square with training at the top and an I following two different circles. But here we are on the home splash screen after you open the app. It says eye movement training, something in a foreign language, and then start. Um, go ahead and click start, and you'll automatically get something that's set up by default. In this case, it is a, um, a panda bear on a ball who's rolling along, moving around the screen on a white background. The first thing we want to do is to open the menu. So to open the menu, press the word options at the top center of the screen. This will open up a full menu for the app. In order to close the menu, you'll press the word options again, and you can go in and out of the menu as often as you would like. There are two different abilities to adjust the scale or the size of the objects as they are presented. The object scale is very straightforward. It is a slider adjusting how big the picture or the object is. As you slide it up, it gets bigger. As you slide it down, it gets smaller. The canvas scale is a little bit different as it adjusts the size of the background. So, of course, the screen stays the same size. So, this can adjust the size of the object. Um, though as you make the background bigger, a portion of the object might go off the screen. Um, some kids might actually enjoy this. They might think it's funny that, uh, in this case, the little panda bear's nose or um, behind goes off the edge of the screen. Um, other kids might lose the object in it. So I suggest moving that canvas scale initially to a smaller size and moving your object scale as big as you can to a point where you think that your student will be able to to see it. Um, you can adjust the moving speed of the object and how quickly it moves or bounces around the screen with the moving slider. Um, I do encourage you to adjust this and trial this. Um, while a fast speed might attract your students' eyes, it'll likely be much harder for them to maintain gaze and tracking. So initially, I suggest that you start off with a slow or a little bit of a medium speed so that your student has the ability to follow, find, to find, follow, and track that object moving around the screen. Um, there are four buttons uh, in the access panel. Um, there are play, stop, pause, and action. Um, play allows that object to start moving. If you were to stop it, um, then Sorry, maybe I'll do play, play and pause. So if you were to play, that object starts to move. Pause will stop it temporarily. Oh, for some reason I'm not able to pause it. Pause will stop it temporarily. And the stop button will stop the action, which would start the movement over again from its starting location rather than just a temporary pause and movement again. 
um, the action button, which is this uh, this little man who's standing straight up to signify not moving, or he's got his arms and legs splayed to, mo to indicate movement, has some element of the object in motion. And so in this case, with the panda bear with the ball, when it's not selected, you notice that ball that he is standing on remains stationary. But when it is on, that ball starts to spin and his legs are moving so he can stay precariously on top of that ball. The paths uh, indicated in this thing, there's 13 different paths that, um, that you can look at. I encourage you to try them and observe which is the best at keeping the student's attention. Just go ahead and click on whichever one. You have zigzags and circles and reverse circles and squares. And um, you also have these ones that have just little uh, circles and then lines. They causes the object to kind of jump around the screen at a certain timed interval. Um, of course, you have a few different objects, not clearly enough, but you have the panda bear on the ball. There is a turtle. There is a volleyball, a yellow volleyball with high contrast. There's a fish, a red fish, a blue car, and a black ball. While it would be fantastic to be able to change the colors of all of these um, depending on your students' preferences and favorite color, that is not a feature of this app. However, there is an opportunity to adjust the background. So if you know that your student might really be drawn to a bright red, you can do that black ball on a red background. Similarly, you could change the object on that red background. Make sure that you're selecting high contrast. Um, as an example, this yellow ball on a yellow background would not be good for most of our students to be able to track and find. Eventually, with a lot of practice, we can challenge them to train to identify uh, colored objects on similar backgrounds. But initially, let's make sure if they're looking for something that we have a high contrast background for it to display on. Um, that is about it. That is the app, um, Eye Movement Training um, from Ebenezer School. It is a free app, and I highly encourage you all to look look at it, and I encourage you to ask any questions that you might have in implementing it. Thank you.